Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, had a good uh, trading session, a lot of value today. Um, really good day, really good day. We'll get to that uh, in a second. So we, we had a goal. If you watched the, if you watched the weekend update, Friday was uh, by far the, the most value day uh, of the whole week. Okay, uh, things played out pretty much on both sides perfectly, seamlessly. Second entries, confirmations worked out really, really well. Very strong way to end. Uh, to end the week, and, it, and like I said in the video over the weekend, we needed it mentally, okay? Like we talked about, a lot of traders hit a wall. Um, my goal for today, actually my goal for today and kind of going forward until um, a lot of this mess is behind this, I, I have a goal every single day, okay? Number one, um, identify the really good value days. How do you know about that day? Well, number one, the pre-market session is going to probably confirm your after work prep. So I kind of know what I want to see for tomorrow. Okay. And the way we are setting up for tomorrow, just kind of as a, as a brief, we're setting up for some pretty good value. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to see happen is the futures kind of confirm my game plan. I want to wait for confirmation, wait for the channels to develop, uh, get into the trade, take cash flows. Obviously, uh, if the stock could stretch, great, go into the next supply zone and next demand zone. If not, use break even on all runners. Uh, but the most important part was I want to leave every single uh, trading session with mental equity. Okay, I, th I think we we discussed we discussed that pretty uh, good in nausea uh, all of last week in the webinar. We talked about that some uh, in the weekend update, and we kind of really emphasized that point. Uh, this morning, because again, this is a new market. This is a market that nobody has seen and nobody's ever traded before just because of, again, uh, the self quarantine factor. So the rules kind of change. We have to kind of adapt with the landscape because again, there's no playbook of being con confined to your home for weeks, months, even, you know, God forbid, even, even longer than that. Um, so a lot of people will lose a lot of mental chips. So today we accomplished that, okay? Uh, we got value, okay? That was definitely the checklist. Um, my mind was sharp because I got a lot of rest over the weekend. And the most important part was we accomplished what we set out to accomplish. Very good trading session. And the most important part was we kept our mental equity. And I've been saying this uh, in the webinar towards the latter part of last week into uh, this morning strategy towards the end. And I, I told a lot of the traders this, if you had a really, really good morning, we'll talk about the pivots uh, in a second, very aggressive. If you had a good morning, again, you don't need to trade after lunch, okay? Uh, take the mental equity that you had, yet you're leaving on a positive head, you got value, your mind is still sharp for the next trading day, you didn't exhaust excess mental equity, and what you're doing is going to the new day fresh, right? Fresh, confident, sharp, and most important, patient. Again, when you're trading the whole day, especially in an environment like this, um, you are going to put yourself behind the eight ball because how much energy you're trying to, uh, how much trying you burn, especially towards the afternoon when everybody knows, even in a good market, in a bullish scenario, that ranges in the afternoon, even the strongest stock will shrink, shrink, shrink. So what you can get in the afternoon for 50 cents, a dollar, dollar 50, you could get in that morning interval from 9.30 in the morning to about lunchtime, you could get three, four, five dollars uh, because again, the aspect of traders are excitable in the morning, uh, they chase more, there's a lot more emotional value. So the, the, the afternoon setup that you're looking at, okay, you can get four times the measure potential in the morning. And again, what you will not do is burn mental equity. So I know a lot of people did very, very well uh, this morning. Man, I, I could have, I literally stopped my day, what, 10.30? Uh, it, was, it was incredible. I, I just wanted to kind of end the day, accomplish what we need to accomplish, uh, I went to play some ball, okay, not a lot of ball, but I went to play some ball, 
Uh, I rested my head. I'm sharp. I'm not tired, which is the complete opposite of where I was last Monday. Uh, really, really, you know, grinding, grinding every single day on. By the time Tuesday rolled around, um, I was a walking vegetable. What I did like today, a couple of things I like today from the macro point of view, okay? Number one, let's talk about baby steps. Everybody knows this corona thing is not going away anytime soon, okay? Uh, over the weekend, Trump said they're going to extend the social distancing to, to the end of April. You could probably, you could probably, you know, keep on fast forwarding that day to, you know, May and June, July, whatever long it takes for, for this thing to kind of go away. But what I like, what at least I heard today from now, again, unfortunately, New York is literally the hotbed for every disaster, whether it's in a movie, in a play, in a Broadway show or in real life, New York City now is literally um, the epicenter of everything. So when aliens come, like in Independence Day, of course they're coming down to New York City. That's where it's there. That's where the action is. So what I like, what I like, what I heard, and again, you heard the cases doubling, 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 doubling. Cuomo actually uh, came out today. The governor of New York came out today and said the cases are now doubling every six days. It sounds horrible, and it is, but that's actually slowing down a little bit because cases were doubling every four days. Again, you, you, you need something to have optimism, right? Baby steps. So hopefully, uh, you know, it will start slowing down more and more and more. I know a whole bunch of ventilators. I think Elon Musk is sending a whole bunch of ventilators. Uh, I read over the weekend that Stefan Marbury, right? Stefan Marbury's Brooklyn zone, Coney Island zone, Lincoln High School zone. Stefan Marbury uh, is negotiating a deal with China, right? He's a big, big, big monster god now in China that he, they're sending over, I believe it was 10 million ventilators. So hopefully, hopefully New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and everywhere else that's having a monster, monster problem with this corona uh, virus is going to get uh, the, need, the, the much needed help uh, that it deserves. But this is what I really liked about from, from the trading aspect today. I like the market structure today, okay? I like how orderly everything was. I like the fact that we didn't have up 500, down 400, up 600, down 300. It, you know, the market pretty much opened, the pre-market session was pretty much flat, went down a little bit and started grinding higher. And then the next thing you know, we were up four to you know, four or 500 points and we stood there. And, and the most important part, I kept on saying, you know, again, we'll, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. I kept on saying, if, if we just don't sell off, right? If we just kind of sit here, up, you know, down, up 400, up 350, up, you know, four stuff. I think we're going to have a premium day tomorrow. And if you look at the indexes, okay, if you look at the indexes today, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So here's what I like from the Qs. Number one, the Qs took out Friday's, fr Friday's highs and never took out Friday's low. So they put in a higher, higher, higher low. Well, why was that important? Because again, Friday, had a pretty, you know, pretty aggressive reversal into the close. So what I liked, what I saw today was number one, they took out the highs, never took out the lows. If you watch, if you're looking at the five day moving average, okay, you'll see how it's just kind of riding it up right here. So tomorrow will be a very, very important day. Uh, we talked about this area on the weekend update. The Qs really need to confirm that 192.75, 193 level, because if they do and they start building, we could get a really good rally to the 195 and a half, almost to the 198 level. Again, fingers crossed, but what again, the, the most important part of any, I don't want to call it, a, don't call it a bottom, but any substantial pause in volatility is ranges contracting an orderly kind of melt up, kind of a walk up every single day. So we got a little bit of a good news today. Obviously, there's still a lot of cases, way too many deaths. But again, a little bit of good news is a whole lot better than 100% of bad news. So we'll take whatever we can get. From the technical point of view, I like the way the market held. Uh, held and started grinding higher, pretty much towards the high of the day. So Qs, we have a very definitive number for tomorrow. Uh, you look at the SPY, right? The spiders are up against the supply zone, but, 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 uh, if we can reclaim, you know, 263 on a close, right? If the, Q, if the spies can just close above the 263 level, we got a big, 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 big window uh, for a possible move higher. Uh, you look at the IWM, and again, not that the IWM is the make it or break it, but again, it does still represent 
uh, speculation money. So again, uh, for it to really get going, it needs a close above 120. But again, it'd be nice to see a, you know, a break above the 16 area and start moving to the 1760s, which is the high uh, from the 26. So again, little, little baby steps. But overall, I like what we're having right now. I think the same game plan for uh, tomorrow, again, unless something really crazy comes out overnight, I do believe there's a lot of good value. All we need to do is wait for the confirmations for tomorrow. Um, and if you look at today's action, really good. I mean, really, really good stuff. Uh, if you would have told me I would have traded um, Boeing back-to-back -back days, I would have thought you were crazy, but uh, it was a good trade on Friday, was a really good trade uh, today. And again, this is why I, I always, I always, I never understand why, you know, I'm not a, I'm not one of these short sellers, but I always get the, the idea of you never stand in front of a train, right? And if you look what happened to Boeing uh, just in the last, what, a week or so, right? Boeing has been on a monster run, right? Going from 93 to 186, okay? Eventually, like everything else, buyers get tired, sellers get tired. And the buyers obviously got tired a couple of days ago and started the back test. And all you need to do, again, especially if you're a short seller, you don't need to stand there you know, like a deer in headlights watching a, a train come at you, you know, on, on the front side of the move. Just wait for the buyers to get exhausted. Watch for these 60 minute channels start putting in lower highs. And once they confirm, they go lower. Uh, Boeing got crushed on Friday. Really good pivot there. And today, same thing. Today was a beautiful trade. I mean, beautiful, beautiful trade. Um, let's start off with Netflix. Um, I actually entered Netflix uh, twice today. The first time I entered, it was super duper thin, right? Ridiculously thin. Um, I bought it, went up a little bit, and the bids were two weeks, so I wound up losing about 72 cents. No big deal. I bought it back on the remount of 369, and the stock, I said the stock was gonna go uh, to 373. That's where it went, okay? 373 was the first supply. Um, I took it for about two and change on my second entry, so I netted out a pretty decent move on the trade. Again, liquidity. Still a little bit of a problem, but what I did like what I'm seeing, again, I'm trying to create baby steps of optimism. What I did like what I saw out of Netflix, out of Amazon, out of Tesla, uh, out of NVIDIA this afternoon, we started seeing the bids and asks started getting narrow. That's a very, very bullish thing. That means buyers and sellers are comfortable. That means there are more participants. Again, the closer the bids and asks are, the more participants they are, the further they are, the less participants. So I like what I'm seeing, baby steps. Again, baby steps uh, on the way up. So good trade on Netflix. Uh, net, net was a good trade on Netflix. Uh, Tesla never made it up to the 526, but I'll show you a pivot to the downside. They just completely imploded. Uh, BYND, there was no second entry. It broke the 64, went down to 63.80, I think. There was no second entry for it. Uh, Boeing was definitely the move of the day. So I shorted this thing. And again, this is the difference between trading equity and trading options. Uh, majority of the live webinar, I, I would say we're 60-40. If I had a guess, I would say we're 60-40 equity to option traders. I'm an equity trader. So I short Boeing. And if you guys remember, it was on SSR. So I'm just sitting there and just sitting there. And the stock is sitting there. And you know what's going to happen on an SSR. If, if there's not legitimate more sellers than buyers, you're you gonna get squeezed. So I sat there, I sat there, I sat there. Here was the 151. I said, you know, first move to 146. And this thing just got destroyed. Second day in a row, uh, it, it got murdered, right? So here is the here is the 151 right here. Uh, excuse me, here is the 151. Where's 151? Uh, right here, here. So here is the 151 right here. 51 is the low here. And it just got destroyed, absolutely destroyed. That was the first trade of the day. Really good trade, really, really good trade of the day. So um, I hit Netflix second time around. Uh, hit Boeing very, very aggressively. So that was good as well. Pretty pleased with that. And then things started getting pretty good, right? Like really, really good. Like very, very aggressively good. Uh, ZM obviously never got to the 162, 165 level. I'll show you in a second. There was uh, a pivot to the downside, which I think could possibly have started, maybe, maybe, maybe started a back test more for tomorrow, but we'll show you that in a second. Uh, BLPH went pre-market. There's no way you could have traded this thing. It, it went 18, it went 19 to like 21 in seconds on no liquidity. So there was no trade there, at least for us. 
Uh, Chewy, nice move on Chewy. The initial move is over a dollar. Here's 38, right? Chewy, again, online, uh, online doggies, right? So here's the 38, right? It took out the 38, went all the way up to almost 30, uh, 39.60. So nice move. Congratulations for you guys who caught that. And then this was, I mean, a massive candle. Okay, congratulations to all you guys who caught this. And again, Tesla's weak. You know, de Tesla's definitely, definitely weak. I am definitely, for all the names I'm watching to the upside tomorrow, I'm definitely watching Tesla to uh, the downside tomorrow. Uh, I think there's a lot of value there if it confirms. But here is the pivot, 508. If it builds below, it can flush. And this was a massacre candle. This was a really, really massacre candle. Uh, here was the 508 right here. Here was the 508 right here. You see these two candles here, guys? 509, 509. So once it started building below 508, I said there's a shot it gets down to uh, Friday's low, and that's what it did. It went from 508 all the way down to the 491 area. This is the pivot for tomorrow. If this thing starts building, look how much room you have 76, 60. So I'm watching Tesla for tomorrow. This could be a really, really good play. So I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, Boeing, perfect. Tesla, monster. Uh, Chewy, again, perfect. Cake, I still like cake. It didn't rally today. Uh, it didn't rally today with the market. Again, you saw that headline on, what was it, on Friday? They're not just, just they're not paying rent. I think like on 200 some odd locations. Uh, these two candles just need to confirm. If these two candles confirm, uh, I think it will start testing the, uh, the 317 lows of 1450. So I definitely want to want, keep an eye on cake for the next couple of days. Uh, obviously it didn't confirm there. Uh, Netflix, yeah, so this is the second entry. It exploded. Amazon, you just started seeing massive call buyers coming in on Amazon on the weeklies for next week's. Uh, I said 1941-42 needs to build. You saw 1950s, 20, uh, 2000s, 2050s come in very, very aggressive uh, call buyers. So here was the pivot. 1941-1942 uh, needs to build. Here was Amazon, right? So here was Amazon right here, 1941. Oops, excuse me, wrong one. I'll look at the daily chart here. So 1941 right here, 19, where is it? 19, no. 19, where the hell is it? Oh, here it is, yeah. 1941, 1942 needs to build, and it exploded, right? It exploded, put in a high of uh, 1973. Looks good, still looks good for tomorrow if it could reclaim today's uh, price action. So that was very, very good on the way up as well. Uh, Netflix finally worked for me, so that was finally good as well. Uh, ridiculous move on Boeing. You can just see over and over again, these pivots are just very, very strong, uh, and again, and I kept on saying, I go, look, our, our goal is not only to prosper. I, again, this is the major message, especially in the live webinar where I'm speaking seven hours a day. It's very, very important to look at the big picture. It's not about the individual trade. Okay. It's about long term, not burning yourself out and making yourself into, a, you know, into a mental, uh, into a mental basket case. It's all about pacing yourself, right? It's not, you know, you can't run a marathon hundred miles an hour. You got to pace yourself. So I said, remember, our goal is not only to prosper in this environment, but to keep our mental edge. Super duper important. So if you are having a good day, and this is where we talk about making adjustments to your trading right now, you know, taking downtime. So I said, look, if you're having a really good day, consider just putting in trailing stops on all your runners and taking the day. Again, it's a good problem to have, right? Good problem to have. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll get your day in, you'll keep your runners on, you'll let your money work for you, but more important is you'll stay fresh into the next trading day. Very, very important. Um, I like this v Vanda. Uh, I like this VNDA for the next couple of days. They had a Corona PR, which I don't think anybody even cared about, but I kind of like this chart. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, 263.75, 263.75, 264 uh, needs to build. Uh, again, not a huge move, but again, this is the whole point of the afternoon pivots. You're not gonna get a monster move, but here was the 264, right? Here was the 264, and it went to like almost 266. So I still like it uh, for tomorrow. Um, yeah, so here, here's my, here's my point. I go, we're setting up for a really good value potential day tomorrow. Uh, as long as they don't sell into the queues, uh, higher highs, higher lows, uh, things look good. And oh, so here was the pivot. Uh, here was the last pivot of the day, right? Uh, 152, if it builds below, can flush on ZM. And this is where I think maybe we're going to start getting a back test on it tomorrow. So here is the 152, right? Here is the 152 right over here, right? 152, 152. It built 152 went all the way down to 147. So great job for all you guys who caught that as well. So a premium day today, no doubt. 
Uh, tomorrow, again, no expectations. Um, I have a very, very specific mindset. I am bullish tomorrow. Okay, so if we could get a, a gap, if we could get a gap down tomorrow uh, for anything, would be very, very appreciative. If the market gods are listening, if we do get a gap up tomorrow, obviously, then we have we go to Plan B again. Gap and go. We had two of them last week. Uh, can we start confirming the 92, 75, 93 on the Qs? If that's the case, then everything should wake up as well. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.